She said that I don't need her. At this stage, I basically first did this under layer, which my intentions were to have it be a very warm under layer with a lot of reds and oranges and um, kind of fire inspired colors. But I did put um, a lot of blue in this corner over here. And after looking at it all together, I felt like it was too much blue. So I wanted to go ahead and lighten that up. And I also wanted to kind of draft uh, some of where my focal point was going to be. So one thing I didn't anticipate, since I did experiment with a fluid acrylic medium in the background here, was that I wouldn't be able to um, draw on top of the fluid medium with ink because it was uh, pretty glossy. It wasn't really accepting ink very well. So I went ahead and put a little bit of absorbent ground on top here and scraped some of it off because I did want to still capture some of the underpainting through the more drafted areas, which will have more paint on top of them. So um, then I went ahead and drew some of the structure of the painting in here. I don't know if you can really see that in the camera. There we go because I do want to have a little bit of, um, a little bit of pre-drawing set in so that from that point on, I am planning on abstracting some areas of this and having some areas of uh, really kind of tight line work and focus and some uh, areas where your eyes can breathe. But even when I do that, I do like to go ahead and put a little bit of the structure in the painting so I kind of have a rough idea of what's going to be going there. Okay, you guys might notice that I am kind of uh, working in a weird setup here. It's my daughter making noise in the background. Uh, I'm working in the kitchen right now and I did just order myself a big tarp but for the time being I just have a bunch of garbage bags basically taped up against the wall so that I can save our walls. <laughs> so it kind of looks silly but it is a temporary solution. Um, another tip I wanted to point out, if you are doing something silly like me and painting on the wall, is that um, I've been moving this canvas around a lot as I'm working on it. And so I just went ahead and kind of taped the two little corners for the time being um, so that it doesn't really move too much when I'm working on it. So I went ahead and uh, have been filling in a little bit more of this. And um, I'm trying to bring the canvas up together as I uh, as I work on this, but uh, I have been working on this corner a little bit more than the rest of the canvas, so today I'm going to concentrate on moving away from that side for a little while. I wanted to point out to you guys something interesting um, about some of the mediums that I'm experimenting with and that I'm working with on this. And uh, before I get to the interesting reaction, um, on that side, I wanted to point out to you guys that almost all of my paintings, um, I do use a medium called Absorbent Ground by Golden in the background. On, um, basically, it kind of looks like gesso, and I put it on after I re gesso a canvas. And basically, it's a watercolor medium. Uh, you can put almost any type of paint on top of it though, and it can be thinned out and diluted. Essentially, its purpose is to make any surface more receptive of paint. So once you put it down and you paint on top of it, it really holds uh, the paint into the canvas better. It really makes blending like a dream. And I use it with oils a lot. And uh, basically, if you've ever worked with a canvas that is kind of plasticky and the paint that you put on top of it moves around a lot, that uh, is something that absorbent ground really, really takes care of. So when you put it down, it it kind of uh, it has a lot of tooth and it pulls the color right into it. And it's really a great medium that I like a lot. So uh, I went ahead and put that on the background and put some acrylic paint and mixed in a little bit of water and used uh, fluid medium and also some pouring medium in the background here. 
And then I knew I wanted to make these more orb-like circular shapes over here, semi-translucent. I wanted them to have some transparency and I wanted to be able to see the background through them. So I used, uh, again, some acrylic paint. There's a little bit of sparkle essence paint in there as well and I also used pouring medium. Now if you remember, I put down some more absorbent ground in the background right here since I was having a little bit of trouble drawing on top of the background here. And what happens when you use pouring medium on top of absorbent ground is that pouring medium is kind of a plasticky medium. So when you put it on top of absorbent ground, since the absorbent ground tends to pull water out of things, it makes it crack. I think this is a really interesting effect. I think it's something that really works for this painting. It is, uh, possibly if you didn't realize this is going to happen, it could be considered a negative thing if you were experimenting with these two mediums and you really didn't want it to have any cracking, um, then I would say just be aware that these mediums react this way because there is no water. I did not, didn't add any water to these areas, but since I added water in the background here, you can see it worked out, um, fine with no cracking. So that's an interesting thing I wanted to point out to you guys that happened in this painting. I put down most of what I would consider to be the kind of meat and potatoes layer of this painting. There are still some areas, uh, like the area in the center of the screen right now, where I haven't quite laid down all of the opaque parts yet, but I am uh, working on finishing that up right now. Some of these areas over here on the left I am going to intentionally leave blank. You can see that little flower right there. When I come in with my next layer, which will be black and white and a few more colors to kind of sharpen up some of this, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make those translucent areas have a little bit of a black outline and kind of make them nice and crisp. I'm also gonna be coming in with some more of these geometric shapes. I really like how they're breaking up the more organic looking areas. And my intention is to add more geometric shapes over here towards the right hand side of the canvas to kind of have the whole image be um, kind of breaking apart, if you will, and scattering towards the right corner. I really like how this painting is flowing and uh, it's my intention to have your eye kind of start at the top left corner and then kind of slowly make your way to the bottom right. Quick tip that I wanted to mention to you guys uh, because I discovered it as I was working on this painting. I think I probably mentioned in this video before by now that I am currently working in my kitchen and um, previously to this I did have my home studio but when I had my daughter we decided to make it into her nursery so I'm now working in the kitchen and this is the first large-scale acrylic painting that, that really that I've done and so uh, we went ahead and put some garbage bags behind it and on the floor just to try to save the floors a little bit as I was working on this. Um, and I did purchase a tarp that you guys see right there <clears throat> as a more permanent solution for this. Um, however, I didn't anticipate the fact that when acrylic paint dries, it becomes really plasticky. And so all of the acrylic paint that's now dried. I know, babe. Hi. All of the acrylic paint that's dried now uh, is sticking sticking to my shoes and uh, is then sticking on our linoleum floor so I have to go back and scrape all that off. So um, and that I, I foresee that being a problem with the tarp as well so I'm going to have to either put down some cardboard on top of the floor portion on top of the tarp as well or um, maybe some unprimed canvas that you can get from Home Depot just so that the acrylic paint doesn't uh, stick to your shoes the same way. I'm hoping that those solutions will work. And I just wanted to share that with you guys because it was kind of a, kind of a silly mistake. 
and hopefully you guys can learn from that mistake and not have to scrape paint off your floors. <laughs> So most, well all, of the main color blocking is done on the left hand side. At this point I'm coming into the right hand side. You can see some of the geometric shapes that I'm going to be placing down are only outlined at this point. I did start on my final layer um, of the white and black and kind of solidifying where I want things and exactly how I want, um, exactly how detailed I want some areas up on the left hand side. But then. I decided that um, I wanted to go ahead and block in the color on the right. I previously thought I was going to add some more detail up here and then worry about that, but I think in order to um, make this canvas cohesive, I'm going to have to need to uh, go ahead and do that color blocking first. There's only a few more um, shapes back there that need to be added anyway, but um, it will really help me bring the rest of the canvas together as I do the final layer. So that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, you can see some of the geometric shapes are more uh, transparent and some of them are more solid and opaque. Um, I might have to go in and add a few more opaque areas. I really like the kind of, uh, I don't know, it's kind of faded and decayed. Reminds me of um, like run down buildings a little bit and how beautiful they are. I, I really like that kind of, um, I guess distressed look that some of the geometric shapes have right now, but I want to make sure that I also have some solid pops of color, so I'm going to go back in and do that right now. Okay, are you guys ready to see the finished painting? So I am definitely really happy with the way that this painting turned out and I had a lot of fun playing with different mediums that I don't usually use and uh, I also realized that I did quite a few things differently with this painting than with most of my paintings. One was the um, using different mediums than I typically use and experimenting with that. That was a lot of fun for me and I think that it created some really interesting textures here. I do have a few more mediums that I want to work with, so probably in my next video I'll go ahead and use those. I also really made an effort with this painting to work in layers, which is something I don't typically do that much. And I also did um, start from a darker background on this one than I usually do. And it really gave some of these colors that were placed on a darker background a really interesting quality that I like a lot. I'm going to show you guys a little bit more of a detailed view. And I think I mentioned before, I hadn't intended on this painting being quite so polychromatic when I started but I really, really am happy with the way it turned out. And I think that um, all the colors just look so rich. I think that's partially due to the dark background. So as always, if you guys have any questions or comments, you can go ahead and leave them in the comments, or um, you can also message me on my Facebook page at facebook.com slash brittanyhanksart. If you're interested in purchasing this piece or in purchasing prints of this piece, uh, you can also email me at sales at brittanyhanks.com, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it, and I will see you soon. Thank you.
But I don't need her Cause every time I call She's sitting sweeter When I know she said To keep near her But I'm feeling colder And I must leave her I'm sat down here with my head hung down And I just seem to find A bit of peace, a bit of love A bit of something left behind Sat down here, best